model-based systems engineering, or how I can pack my suitcase. I don't know what you are feeling when you have a look at this picture, but to be honest with you, I'm looking forward to the next vacation and the next travel. For such a travel, one important point is to pack the suitcase. And I don't know who might know the game I pack my suitcase and take with me, but actually what I'm doing is I'm playing this game every time before the next travel. First in my mind, and I'm adding all my wishful things into the suitcase. So of course, I would like to take my sport shirt with me for the colder days, my jogger, which comes up with my basket, for the daily walks, my pants, and also my sneakers. Hopefully the sun is shining, so I will need my hat and also my sunglasses. I would like to take nice pictures. For the evening, I would like to wear my red dress with my red pumps. And at the beach, I would like to have my flam flamingo with me. For the children, we will need something to play in the sand or in the water. And also, I would like to train a bit my brain in the vacation time. So similar like this, I'm starting always to pack my suitcase. At the beginning, just in my mind. But once I'm starting to really pack my suitcase, every time it's the same. Either it doesn't fit or it fits, but then my suitcase is too heavy. So what I have to do is I have to pack everything out, rethink about essential points and repack everything. Sometimes I'm doing this even twice. So based on this problem, I was asking myself if there is perhaps a way how I could avoid this. And I was asking myself if a model-based systems engineering approach might help. So I was starting to think about the general approach of MBSE. Of course, really in a nutshell, but nevertheless, I was imagining my suitcase could be a system. And of course, we are not only talking about a suitcase. So let's imagine we're talking about a travel system. And within this travel system, we do have also a hand luggage and a suitcase. And especially when you're traveling via plane, we have specific requirements on these cases, on these hand luggages and on the suitcases. So we have specific system requirements. So for the hand luggage, that means we are only allowed to have a bag or a small case with 55 centimeters height, with 30, 40 centimeters length, and also 23 centimeters of width. And also that's the same for the suitcase. So when we take these criteria as our system requirements, then we can start to build a first small model. And based on this model and these system artifacts, we can then also add specific needs, so specific stakeholder requirements. So for my suitcase, for example, I would like to have some dividers because I don't want to put my lovely red dress between my sport um, clothes. I want to have also some hidden laundry bag and I would like to have a suit, a green suitcase. And based on these specific stakeholder requirements, I can start to pack my hand luggage and my suitcase and play again the game. I pack my suitcase and take with me. And once I have done this, I get a better overview what I would like to take with me. And thanks to this overview, I can then see faster some possible risks. So I might risk again to can't close my suitcase because of the red perms or an additional skirt, for example. Furthermore, I can easily see that I have added also into my suitcase a system or a thing which might be another subsystem and needs to be reflected in another way. And I can easily see also some non-conformances because I have added also some travel system restrictions, which indicates that I'm not allowed to take a bottle of water with me for the security control. 
So things like this, I can easily adapt my system, so my suitcase, before I really start to pack. So that's, that means for me, I will save time and also a lot of stress. Furthermore, I can start to reuse these general travel system and adapt this to my different holiday trips. So for example, I can adjust it to a travel system for my summer holidays and also travel system for my winter holidays. So with specific things for the suitcase for the winter. And even these different travel systems, I can then reuse and adapt with minor changes and not only for the summer holidays, but also for all other upcoming holidays in the winter with minor specific changes based on the destination. And thanks to this, I can start my vacation preparation with less stress in advance and make sure to have all the necessary things in my travel system to have at the end the great next holiday. But to make this happen, I also would like to give you right now an introduction how this might look like in a professional tool. So the first step would be right now to start um, writing the system requirements for our travel system. And for this one, I'm starting to work in a digital platform to do so. And therefore, for the first step, let's jump into the area of system requirements and go onto a dedicated process view, process view where I have different possibilities. So from this point of view here, I have the possibility to either create a new document with my system requirements or to import already existing documents with all the information. Once imported or created, we have for every single document a life cycle. So we are starting in this life cycle for the document with the status draft. We do all the necessary changes for our system requirements. And once this is done, we can then send this document into an approved status so that everyone knows we can go forward with the next step. And the benefit um, in working in a digital platform is that we have all dedicated information, not only in a document, but instead also in the full system. And also for our system requirements, we have a life cycle behind. So therefore, we can see at every single point the status of our system requirements, and we get also the system requirements traceability, right? But let's imagine right now, for the first step, we have already created our system requirements document. So we have here already created the system requirements for our hand luggage. And we have also created our system requirements for the suitcase, right? And we have the dedicated information about um, restrictions and so on for our for the system. And here we see we have already the information about the height, the length and the width. And also the same for the suitcase, for the weight, for the height, length and width. So what I'm just say what I'm just seeing is here in this document there is missing also the maximum weight for our hand luggage. So therefore I'm adding just these kind of information here in the document saying the hand luggage shall have a maximum weight of in this case it's 8 kg per hand luggage. I'm just saving this information and by saving this information, I have a new history information in my system. So that means with every single time I'm saving something, adding something, I have a new, it calls um, revision number. And this revision number, I can, I can do then um, check what kind of information I have right now um, changed or added into my system. And comparing this, for example, with old information. So for example, what we see here, we have already created a baseline system requirements 2.0. So let's compare this with the last changes I have just done. And let's see the comparison. And here what we see is from the last baseline until right now, we have just added the information with the maximum weight of eight kilograms for our hand luggage, right? So this would be the first step 
creating this document, adding this information, doing some necessary changes. And once this is done, we can then send our right now in a draft status document into an approved status. So therefore, we just open a sidebar and see this document is right now in the draft status and we would like to change this into an approved status. But as you might see, this doing perform action to approve is in gray. So that means I have to do other other things in this case. So that's the reason it, it shows me that I have to add also my digital signature for this document. So therefore, I'm going to my signature part and saying, okay, I would like to approve right now this document by adding my login credentials. And the system is asking me automatically for my username and my password. And once I have added this, I have added a digital signature for this document. And once this is done, I can then change my document status from draft into approved and save this. Like this, I can easily start writing my system requirements with some extended benefits out of, for example, a Word document, right? And once this is done, I get an also an overview of all my system requirements and in which status they are. So let's jump in. So what we see is currently we have four system requirements in an open status, one in progress and three in done. With this dashboard, you get also the possibility to work a bit more agile and move, for example, your upcoming system requirements for which you would like to do some necessary changes in a progress um, status. And what you also get, you will get a first system requirements traceability view. So here in this case, we have added um, the suitcase weight of 23 kilograms. This is the parent system requirement of the information for the suitcase for the length, for the width, and for the height. And like this, in the first step, we have created our system requirements in a digital platform and can right now, in the next step, move forward with the stakeholder requirements. But before we start writing the stakeholder requirements, of course, we have to start to create the first approach of our model for our travel system. So what we're just doing, we have the overall system artifact for the travel system. And based on this travel system artifact, we are creating an, another system artifact for the hand luggage and also another system artifact for the suitcase and have a link between each other. So right now I have created in my digital platform here on the left side, all my system requirements for my travel system. And based on these system requirements, I have on the right side created the first information for my model of my travel system, right? What I would like to do right now is I would like to add these kind of system requirements into my model. So what I can do right now is, and I'm just, closing the sidebar from my digital platform, I can right now easily via drag and drop add these system requirements into my model to have a link between both information tools. So here, for example, we have the system requirement for our hand luggage and the hand luggage shall have a maximum weight of eight kilograms. So what I'm just doing is I can take this information and drag this to my model, to this dedicated information of my hand luggage and have then here directly a link from the requirement to the model. And like this, we can go forward also then for the suitcase information. So here, for example, on the left side, we have the suitcase information about the weight. So I also can drag and drop this information to the system artifact in my model and have them all the information from the requirement side to the modeling side in one view. So this would be the next step then. So right now for our travel system, we have already created on our digital platform the system requirements. We have added the system artifacts and we've created the model and have linked our system requirements to our model. Based on the system artifacts right now, the next step would be to create the stakeholder dedicated requirements. 
So in tier four, we have right now the pos possibility to add, for example, also our to-do lists, um, which I love to do in, um, just in front of, of the next vacation. So based on our approved document with the system requirements, I have right now the possibility to add, for example, a new task for my to-do list, assigning me and also all my travel friends, which are coming with me into the next vacation. And based on this task, I'm just starting to create a new document with all my stakeholder specific requirements. And I can link them also to the system requirements to have also on this um, level, the next part of traceability. So let's imagine right now, we will just create a new task. Let's call this task, please add all stakeholder requirements. And I will assign this task, of course, to me so that I make sure that I don't miss anything. And I assign this task also to my travel friends so that they are also welcome to add their specific stakeholder requirements into the system. What I can do then based on this um, task I can say, okay, right now I'm already in the system. I would like to, to start writing my stakeholder specific requirements. Therefore, I'm just moving my task into an in-progress status. And then what I'm doing is I jump into my new document with the stakeholder requirements. So here I've already created a new document. I've already added some specific needs from my side. So for example, here for my hand luggage, I would like to have an additional pocket for my sunglasses. I would like to have an extra clip outside of my hand luggage to add also my cap and I would like to have an extra net outside to also store my bottle. And like this, I have added my specific needs for my travel system, also for my suitcase. And I have already started to pack a, bit, a little bit my suitcase with specific um, clothes I would like to take with me. And what I see is there is still missing my cosmetic case. So what I'm doing is I'm also adding this um, cosmetic case here. Up, cosmetic case, tech, and we are also adding this as a stakeholder requirement up in my document. So I'm done right now. Everything is fine from my side. So then at the same time, my travel friend is calling me and she is still a bit old school, let's say, and she is telling me, hey, I saw your notification with the task to add stakeholder specific requirements, but she doesn't want to work in this digital platform. She still loves to work in Word, but I mean, that's fine. That's also the good thing working in a digital platform. You also can work in a collaborative way. So that means what I can do right now for my travel friend, I can export this document for my friend export this in a collaborative way so that she also can work in this document. And what I'm doing afterwards, I'm just sending her the email with these specific stakeholder requirements. So this document. So my travel friend has opened the document with the stakeholder specific requirements from my side. She is checking everything and that's fine for her, but just for the for the clothes to put them into the suitcase, she would of course like to add her dedicated um, clothes and her shoes. What she, sh what she sees is here for the cosmetic case, she would like to share the cosmetic case with each other. So, so what she's doing is she says, okay, the cosmetic case, um, needs to be for two person up and she's adding also into the suitcase she is packing in the black dress and also based on the black dress her black pants like this she's adding information and changing information saving this information and sending this document back to me so that I can re-import this information without doing any manual updates or something. Once my travel friend has done all the necessary changes and had add her specific requirements, she is sending the document back to me and I can just re-import these changes. So I take 
the same document which I just exported to her up. and re-import these kind of information. And by updating, what we see is we have here right now automatically the updated information from her side. So cosmetic case needs to be for two person. And she has also added her specific stakeholder requirements. The only thing I have to, have to do right now is I have just to add these kind of information also as specific stakeholder requirements. And like this, we can then start right now in the next step to think about um, how to how to link these kind of information with um, to our system requirements. So what I'm doing here in this case, I will just open a second window and just saying this would be here on the left side and this would be on the right side. I'm just closing for a better view the sidebars and right now we have on the left side our system requirements and on the right side our stakeholder requirements. And of course, they're depending with each other. So therefore, I would like to create also here the next level of traceability on saying, for example, for our hand luggage, um, the type of, of hate, this one depends on, for example, um, the additional pocket for the sunglasses. So and here I'm creating a first link and saving this. Like this, um, I can easily also create from the system requirements level to the stakeholder requirements level, dedicated links with each other and create a next level of traceability. So thanks to this easily linkage, we can easily create the next level of traceability. And as you might remember, in the first level of traceability, we just saw the dependencies between the system requirements itself. And right now we see also the extended version. So the next level of traceability from the system level to um, the stakeholder level. So we see that the system requirements with the weight of the suitcase, that depends also on the different clothes we would like to put in. In this case, it's just an example for the pants and the red dresses. So once we have done this, then we can of course also put our task into an Adan service. So that like this, we can just check our to-do list and co can go further with the next step to pack our suitcase. And based on the stakeholder requirements, we can then start in our model to extend our model and add all the system artifacts based on the, on the stakeholder requirements. So here in this case, we can really then start in the model to see which of our clothes we would like to add into our travel systems. And thanks to this overview, we can easily see that we can risk, for example, that we have a too heavy, a too heavy suitcase. So here, for example, if we remember, the suitcase shall have a maximum weight of 23 kilograms. So based on all the clothes we would like to add, we see that we see some possible risk just in one view. So therefore, do not risk to have a too heavy suitcase. We're just taking, for example, the second one of pumps. We're taking them out. We're just deleting them. And what we also see, we have implemented here, for example, restriction requirements. So standards, which saying that we're not allowed to take any liquids in our hand luggage. So also thanks to this, we can easily see that we won't get with our bottle of water. We won't get through the security control. And what we also can easily identify right now is that we perhaps have also a subsystem in our suitcase. So if you remember, we have a cosmetic case in our suitcase as a stakeholder requirement, and we would like to have this cosmetic case for two persons, so for me and my travel friend. So what I'm just thinking, if it really makes sense to have this as a stakeholder requirement in the suitcase, or if we should better have this cosmetic case as a separated um, subsystem of our travel system. So therefore, what I'm just doing, I'm just, I'm just adding this kind of system artifact and adding this right now as a specific, as a specific 
um, subsystem of our travel system and adding this linkage to our cosmetic case. Here we go. And then we can right now also start to write specific stakeholder requirements for our cosmetic case. And once we are done with our travel system, we can be prepared for the next travel and have dedicated travel systems for the summer, for example, to reuse these every time and have just minor changes for every single um, suitcase and hand luggage. And also for our travel system for the winter with dedicated clothes, um, for example, our ski jacket for the winter holidays. So like this, we are very well prepared for our next upcoming vacation.